I can't believe I'm doing this.
I have this thirst for blood. I can't believe I'm doing this. I cannot enter. It's locked. It's locked, all right. Hello again, Jonathan. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Sorry to disturb you again, but could you spare me a few minutes? Of course, my dear. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Do you know if the epidemic has affected many people in the West End? I confess I've been more concerned by events in the East End. The wealthy have more efficient ways of dealing with infection. But this is no common epidemic. That is true. I must tell my daughter to stay at home for a few days. But the girl is stubborn and fiercely independent. Much like her mother. Concerning your investigation... Yes? Are you truly seeking to identify my maker? I cannot promise you anything, but yes. I am conducting some research of my own. Do you think we shall ever see better days? Or at least, better nights? I know not, Jonathan. I have seen some horrid days in my long lifetime. Experience has taught me that one cannot outrun the fates. When all of this is over, the war and the epidemic, we could leave the city for a while. Travel around Europe, you and I. Traveling is always so complicated for us poor creatures of the night. But yes, I would be glad to travel the world with you, my dear. 
Will you tell me your story one day, Lady Asprey? One of them, perhaps. I have had so many lives, Jonathan. Eternity may not be enough to relate them all. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Yes, Jonathan? Goodbye, Elizabeth. It's locked. That was the vampire I saw earlier. This war takes no prisoners. I cannot enter.
The West End. Never have I felt so sad to be back home. Not a safe place right now, sir. This is now my domain, young man.
I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Do you need help, sir? I think I'm fine. But what happened to my jailer? Be careful. He's as vicious as he is strong. You don't have to worry about him anymore. What happened here? I am Tadao Kimura. I was imprisoned by this lunatic for several days. I thought I was going to die here. You're not going to die now, Mr. Kimura. If you hurry, you should be able to get home safely. It seems that I owe you my life. You have all my gratitude, Dr. Reed, since it is the most precious thing I possess. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care. Are you sure you'll manage to reach the West End by yourself, Mr. Kimura? Yes, I'm perfectly capable of defending myself. We're not ambushed by insane cultists. Goodbye, Mr. Kimura. Take care.
is despicable. The Ascalon Club, the heart of British vampire society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother, and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte, when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously, and the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me, or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night, since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? 
Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time, even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh, now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning. I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion, but I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see? And one day, I'll have my death to face. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me, and I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned sixteen, though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in the dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself or we are all done for. Do you know why Lady Ashbury chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. 
I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education. ...and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life, since you've obviously given it a lot of thought? I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. Stop playing this game at once, Charlotte. This is unworthy of you, of your mother and of myself. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed. Please forgive me. That was stupid. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Good evening, miss. Can I help you? I'm a doctor. Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am... I am... Karina Billow. I don't need any doctor. The rats. Where are the rats? Miss, you don't seem well at all. Are you afraid of rats? Has one bitten you? No. It's me who bites them. Tasty, juicy... Disgusting rats! I can't stop eating them! Help me, please. Help me to disobey the voice. Tell me about yourself, Miss Billow. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm hungry. I need to eat. Have you got something for me? Blood, perhaps? Can you give me blood, Dr. Reed? Don't you remember who you are, miss? What you did for work? I was... strong, proud. I campaigned for good causes. But that was before... before... It does not matter anymore. I was so hungry. What happened to you? The rats! The answer hides in their little crunchy bones, their juicy, tiny brains. Miss Billow, please, try to concentrate. Why do you worry about rats so much? The voice in my head. 
He forces me to do so. Drink their blood, he said. Eat their flesh. Do you feel compelled to obey that voice, Miss Billow? Even if you're loath to submit to it? Yes. Please, help. Tell me about the voice in your head. Who is it? Can you describe it? Is it someone you know, someone you met? Keep your mouth shut, he said. Don't ever speak about me or I'll abandon you. Help me, please, Doctor. What is the local news hereabouts, Miss Billow? Shadows. Shadows hunting shadows. Whispers in the dark. Pestilence. Suffering. Death. I must go now. Goodbye, Miss Billow. <laughs>